Hello viewers, how you are doing? Today with me is Pat Lady for Walkie Talk. Hello sir, how are you? I'm wonderful Chris, <laughs> and yourself? I'm very good, I'm glad to be part of this old segment where we are at the Dublin Castle, yeah. So Pat, can you talk us through what's behind us? Just the history behind where we are today. Well, one of the very first occupations uh, in the rising of 1916 was an attempt to take Dublin Castle, but that was a secondary effort. They first of all occupied City Hall here beside us and then a number of the surrounding buildings so they could put snipers on the roofs to try and contain the troops inside in Dublin Castle or to contain reinforcements being sent to the castle. But they saw an opportunity maybe to rush the castle. Straight away. Straight away. <laughs> uh, not part of the plans really. And they came and they were met by five or six British soldiers uh, who were not armed. There were no bullets in their rifles, we, that's a separate issue altogether. And a policeman from the Dublin Metropolitan Police, a man called uh, William O'Brien. And William O'Brien uh, put his hand up to the leader, a man called Sean Connolly of the Citizen Army, and he said, Sean, he knew him. That's the extraordinary, Sean, go home to your wife, he said. And Sean Connolly shot the policeman dead. Because he said that? Well, just, he stood in the way. And of course, everybody was all you know, anxious to get on with the job and obviously in his excitement he shot the policeman dead. And he was actually the first casualty on Easter Monday, that poor policeman. That was amazing. Okay viewers, we'll be right back after this. There's so much about these 1916. Yes. We're back on in the uh, Trinity College condition. We are and people don't realise the role Trinity College played in unravelling the 1916 rising in favour of the British against the rebels because when the rebels marched right past Trinity College on their way up to Stevens Green or on their way up to City Hall in Dublin Castle they didn't take Trinity College which was a big mistake with hindsight of course <laughs> there were lots of weapons and storage in Trinity they could have captured there were no soldiers per se in the college but there were a few people in there that had military training as part of the officers uh, corps in there so Trinity College, as soon as they realised there was a rising, closed all their doors and over the rest of Easter Monday invited in any British soldiers that were walking in the streets anywhere around the campus, they invited them in and in no time at all they had snipers all along the roofs of Trinity College. So how come they weren't aware that there was no, no one in there in terms of the snipers, the, the, the Irish, uh, the British, how come the, the, there was no one aware that these people were in there? It seems surprising now, but I guess they just didn't have the intelligence, the information, how useful it would have been. And of course, there weren't enough volunteers to capture a campus as big as Trinity. And is it because of the one in Dublin Castle that's already been done? Is that why they kind of thought probably maybe there's nothing happening there? Well, it was, it was never in their plans to take Trinity. They felt it was beyond them. Plus, uh, it was a Protestant university, very loyalist place, and they knew they would have a hell of a job to take that place. <laughs> Down river in the distance there, Chris, you can see Liberty Hall, that tall building with the, the comic kind of covering on it at the moment. Uh, that is the new Liberty Hall in the sense it was built in 1962, but it replaced the famous Liberty Hall, which was the headquarters of the trade union, Jim Larkin and uh, James Connolly were heavily involved in. And it was from there that the whole Easter <laughs> rising was organized and several of the units started out on Easter Monday. And of course the British knew that was going on in there and they thought there were still rebels in the building and they brought a gunboat up the River Liffey called the Helga and they shelled the building, not to bits, they made quite serious holes in the building but uh, the buildings around it, which were a lot of slums, were demolished and sadly people were injured, I, uh, maybe some people were killed there as well and there was absolutely nobody left in Liberty Hall that day so it was all very unnecessary. So many history about the old city. You know, you could have a program that lasted 20 hours and you wouldn't fit it all in. Well, Mercery is extremely historic in its own right. Yes. Uh, very significant in the whole 1916 story. Okay. But long before 1916, it was a trading street, just like you see today. Uh, people selling fresh fruit, vegetables, uh, fish and so on. But of course, around here also were some of the most incredible slums and tenements of Dublin. So a lot of the people living around here were living in dire poverty. The building over here, where it says 1916, yeah. just to the right of that is uh, number 16, which was the headquarters uh, of the Rising. 
uh, wondering about what to do next. Patrick Pierce allegedly saw uh, three or four men on the street with a white flag and they were shot to death by the barricade and they were lying in their own blood here on the street and Patrick Pierce looked out and saw these elderly gentlemen, as he called them, uh, dead and he said, look, enough civilians uh, will have, would have died and so I think it's time to surrender. So the surrender terms, which there weren't any, it was unconditional as it turned out, uh, were organised from this building and eventually Patrick Pierce, to make a long story short, walked down with Nurse Elizabeth O'Farrell to the barricade and was met down there by uh, General Lowe. Oh. And tail on, what's going to be inside? It's going to be the stories of, of the last night in there okay. and the surrender and the story of the characters who were involved in there. And it's all going to be very low key right. uh, and a certain amount of digital aids and so yes. on, you know. Yes. But it's part of the government project to remember 1916 wow. into the future for future generations. What a story. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. It's a pleasure. Viewers, this is some of the story. I hope you've learned something from it. It's the 1916 and it's Pat Lydia. Pat, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much.